Hi guys and welcome to this uh, YouTube live stream. Sorry that we've had some uh, technical difficulties um, getting started. Hopefully this they should have been ironed out and you guys can hear and see me okay. Um, if you can please just give me a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment let me know when you, where you're uh, tuning in from today. That would be tremendously helpful. So um, yeah, excellent. Looks like there's some comments coming through already. So that means that you guys can hear and see me. So sorry about the start, um, the delayed start. If you guys are just joining, just having a, some wonderful issues um, with, with technology, which is obviously a wonderful thing when it works and it's scratching your head if it, if it isn't. So hopefully you guys can see and hear me okay. Um, hopefully I don't appear like I'm left-handed or anything like that. Sometimes the video can be flipped, but according to how I'm seeing myself, it looks like I am um, right-handed. So if, if not, just let me know and I'll try and adjust the, the settings and then um, we, can, we can go from there. So welcome to today's live stream. This is really just a, a beginner, um, a beginner um, live stream here. If, if you've never played jazz chords before, then this is what you need to follow along with. So if you haven't got these already, there are some resources which I've linked to in the description of the video, which um, you should have had. Um, but if you can't find them now, if you just go into my channel, then you should be able to get the um, live stream PDFs on there. So if you just go on my channel, I'm just getting them up now. I'm just slightly unprepared because of these te wonderful technical issues that we've had. So just bear with me two seconds while I find the resources myself. So here we go. So yeah, once you go on that Google Drive link, you should see two PDFs say you should see one that says chord chart exercises and then another that says root on six root on fifth string chord so if you can find both of those chord charts please just uh, give me a like let me know that you've managed to find them okay and we can uh, we can then get started all right so yeah it's fantastic it looks like a few more people are joining in so welcome if you have just joined please give us a like send me a comment let me know if you can hear and see me okay it's my first YouTube live stream, so we are starting a little bit late due to a few technical difficulties, but we should be good to go from, from now. So we're going to start this lesson with the um, second PDF on that Google Drive link, the second PDF, and that will show you eight different jazz chords altogether. Okay, eight different jazz chords. So some people say that when you're learning jazz chords, you can kind of simplify them to think that there's either major chords, dominant seven chords, or minor seven chords. Indeed, that's what Joe Pass is uh, often quoted as saying, and I'm a firm believer in that as well. Really, the only kind of discrepancy here is the minor seven flat five chords, and um, some might say that minor seven flat five chords are minor chords, which indeed they are, but as you probably know, when you get a minor two five one, then you really need a minor seven flat five chord to, to do the job really more often than not so i'm gonna for the purpose of convenience saying that there's four so someone's just asking where is the link for the pdf um so it should be if you go on my youtube channel then um this is obviously the most recent video but the second to most recent video which kind of had a thumbnail and the setup for this masterclass, that if you go in the description for that you'll be able to get the PDF, PDF there and there should be two PDFs that you need for this class. So hopefully you can get those okay. Let me know um, if you can really. And this is a, both of these PDFs are from my book and from my course, Beginner Jazz Guitar Chords. And um, if you want to pick a copy of that up, then that has everything that we're talking about in today's lesson, as well as some etudes and things like that as well. I'll link it in the description below, but if you go to my website, jamiehorroyguitar.com, um, and then you go in the e-store and you find beginner jazz guitar chords there, you can find that as a downloadable ebook as well. And um, just for promoting this new live stream, I actually have got a 50% off deal of this um, ebook. It's usually $20, but you can pick it up for only $10 if you use the code jazz guitar deal at the checkout you'll get 50 percent off that if you want to go and grab that there so just go to my website jamiehorroyguitar.com e-store 
begin a jazz guitar chord and then apply a jazz guitar deal and you will um, get 50% off the uh, off the course. All right, so on with the lesson then. So hopefully everyone has the PDFs. And by the way, you guys can ask me questions throughout this. They appear to be popping up on my screen as I get them. So if you have any questions at any point, just uh, fire away and I'll try and get to them um, as and when I can. But thank you all for taking the time to tune in anyway. I hope that you're all safe and that your practice is all going tremendously well. All right, so the first type of chord that we're going to look at is the major seventh chord and major seventh chords have a sweet and mellow type of tone to them all right so hopefully i'll try and get my back a bit straighter so you can see the chords nice and clear so the first chord is a c major seven there we have the c note on the sixth fret of the low e string then we have the b note there which is the um, ninth fret of the d string the e note which is the ninth fret of the third string and then the g note which is the um, eighth fret of the B string. So that's a C major seventh chord, all right? Root, seven, three, and five. In jazz, it's very important that we're aware of what intervals are underneath your fingers so that you can um, basically amend these to become other chords and you've got more flexibility. Like for example, this chord, if you know that the seventh is there, then you can easily change that to a six, right? So it's a pretty cool sound. Um, so that just comes from having awareness of what's underneath your fingers. All right, so that's the first chord, a C major seventh chord. Once again, the tab and the notation for this is on the PDF, which you can find um, linked to on my channel. If anyone does manage to get that link and they want to be a, a champion and, and, and send a link through on this video, then um, you definitely get a virtual high five from me because it would probably really help anybody out that's just joining here as well. I'll certainly add this after the video is done for those watching after. All right, so first chord, C major seven. All right, second chord, C major seven. We're now playing the same chord, but with the root on the fifth string. We have the root, the fifth, seventh, the B natural, and then the third, which is E natural. So if these chords are completely new to you and you've never played them before, then you want to um, just kind of spend some time getting used to these chords. First of all, just moving your hands between these chord voices so you can get nice, swift motion between each of the voices. And you want to try and develop fluency in all 12 of the keys, really, so that if you've got C major 7, if I'm asking, if you see a lead sheet to like your favorite jazz standard, if you're playing Misty or something like that, first chord is E flat major, you want to be able to get that just like that, really. Imagine like when you first started playing guitar, we all learned these cowboy chords. Then, you know, we, we now know that if we were playing something like um, a Neil Young song or something like that, and it had some cowboy chords, we wouldn't even have to think about how to play these chords. We would know them instinctively. And that's really the same result that you want with these um, these jazz chords as well. You need these just like writing your name. You know, you need to know exactly what they are without even thinking about them ultimately. So once you've got used to playing these chords right here, you want to try to develop the fluency in all 12 keys and uh, yeah you, you're gonna have to excuse me every um every now and then i'm just welcoming welcoming those that are just joining the class um, i'm seeing that more people are watching this as we're going along so welcome if you have just joined us sorry for the delay this um, i know this is not originally um following on from the thumbnail and the promotion that i've set for the class but if you go back on my channel um, you should be able to find a link to the PDF for all the chords that we're talking about uh, and follow along. All right, so so far, C major 7 in two places. And by the way, if you are just joining and you want to support this video, it would uh, tremendously help me out if you uh, leave a comment, let me know where you're viewing from, send me a like. That would uh, help me know that um, you guys can hear and see me okay and help support this video. All right, so C major 7, two different places. Now, that's the first type of chord. The next chord on the PDF that we have is a C dominant seven chord, all right? A C dominant seven chord. The dominant seven chords, they've got a bit more bluesy um, quality to them. So that's basically um, the next type of chord that we're gonna look at here, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the seventh and then we're gonna move that down a semitone and that's gonna give us a C 
dominant seventh chord with the root on the sixth string. Okay, and you can do the same thing here with this major seventh chord. You can look, try and find the seventh to be natural. This one, you only have to get rid of your middle finger. And there's a C d d dominant seven chord right there. All right, so we've essentially got two dominant seven chords now. So this one is a pretty easy amendment to make. If you've got the C major seven here, just lift that off, you've got C dominant seven. No big deal, um, not too much of a problem. Now this one, you do have to rethink of this so it looks like that. Okay, so I'll try and get my uh, left hand nice and clear on camera. So I've got the root with the index, then I've got the B flat with the uh, middle, then I've got the pinky on the E natural, then the ring on the G. Okay, C dominant seven. All right, so two inversions for this. So why would we have to learn two inversions for each of these chords? If anyone knows the answer to this, then let me know. Um, and then just saying thanks for the comments that people have put in. Looks like everyone can hear and see me okay. So thank you all for joining me. Um, so tell me then, guys, if you, if you know the answer to this one, please just uh, just leave a, a comment. So why would you need to know the same type of chord in two different fingerboard locations? What would be the point in that? I'll reveal the answer shortly, but I'll let you guys um, see if you, anyone can chime in with the answer to that. So, so far, C major 7, two different fingerboard positions. C dominant 7 chord, two different fingerboard positions. We're going to go beyond that now to C minor 7 chord. This is a third chord type there on the PDF. So, that's this one. Okay, C minor 7 chord. Kind of like the first chord of Blue Bossa. A great beginner jazz guitar standard if you don't know that. So C minor seventh looks like that. So once again, if we go back to this dominant seventh chord, if you find the third, which is the E there, and bring that down to E flat, there you've got a C minor seventh chord with the root on the sixth string, and it looks like that. Okay, C minor seventh chord. Now you can do the same thing here. So this was a C dominant seventh chord. The third is the E natural, and we're going to bring that down to an E flat, so we've got this chord right here, okay? C minor 7. So we've got that C minor 7 now in two different fingerboard locations, alright? Drop the third. So, formula for a minor 7 chord is root flat 3, 5 flat 7, alright? Two different places in which we can play at that. So to recap so far, C major 7 root on 6, C major 7 root on 5, C dominant 7 root on 6, C dominant 7 root on 5, C minor 7 root on 6, C minor 7 root on 5, 6 chords, all right. Hopefully some of you guys know some of these chords already. Let me know in the comments if you know some of these chords or if they're completely new to you. But if you don't, then obviously you want to really make sure that you catch up with these and maybe after this stream's finished, you want to go and work your way through them at your own pace. Don't feel like that you've got to kind of keep up with me. This will be on my channel for replay afterwards. Um, so don't feel like you've got to kind of keep up with everything that I'm talking about here in today's lesson. All right, so the very last chord type that we're going to look at here is the minor seven um, flat five chord. So the minor seven flat five chord is basically an amendment to this chord, the minor seventh chord. And we're going to get the fifth, which is on the set the eighth fret of the B string and drop that down. So we get this chord right here, okay? C minor seven with a flat five. And by the way, the minor seven and the minor seven flat five, or even the dominant, you can actually really Think of these with your thumb if you want. I have a really bad habit, which no one ever in my history of guitar teaching has ever played these chords the same way in which I do. But I like to play these chords with my thumb so that then I can grab other um, extensions much easier rather than tying up a finger with that index finger there. But most people tend to find that really awkward. So there you go. Um, but you can do it whichever way you like. So minus seven, flat five chord, root on six is that chord, and then root on five is this chord here. Some of you guys probably know this as a blues chord. It's a great blues chord as well. 
used by guys like Thibaut Walker, but in this situation, we're going to be looking at it as a minus seven flat five chord. So uh, once again, just uh, taking a short break to say welcome to this lesson. Thanks for joining in. I know that a few of you now are joining in um, probably a bit later. And sorry for the technical difficulties that we had getting started with this. Um, that's why this is on a different video from what I initially said. If you want the PDF, go back on my channel. Then then it's on the um, most recent upload behind this one. There's a link to the PDF um, there. And obviously, if you're watching this after it's streamed, I'm going to put one in the comments below so that you can get a hold of um, the two PDFs that we're going to be looking at. And uh, like I said in the beginning, both of these PDFs are from my book, Beginner Jazz Guitar Chords, which is available um, basically on my website, jamiehorrorguitar.com. You just go on eStore, Beginner Jazz Guitar Chords there. And there's a special promotion and I'm offering 50% off that course. All you've got to do is enter the code Jazz Guitar Deal at checkout and you can get that course for half price of where it usually is. So take advantage of it. All right, so um, we've so far we've gone through all four of the chords, all right? So if you're following now, just play for each of these chord voicings with me. So you've got the two nice and swift like that. All right, if you can't do that yet, then you want to go and work on these really in your own time so that you can swiftly do that. So you can play them in all 12 keys. So you might want to get, say for example, the C major seventh chord, you just might want to play it down a fret and then as you do that, you can either say out loud or just think about what the chord has changed it. So for example, um, you can see, sorry, just excuse me for a minute. Um, yeah, thank you for the comments, those of you that are leaving comments, thank you for the thumbs up as well. If you are um, joining, then please uh, continue just to, to give the thumbs up, just to let me know that you guys can see and hear this okay. All right, so what I was saying there, to practice them in all 12 keys, C major 7, then you can move down and then you can think B major 7, B flat major 7, A major 7, A flat, G, G flat, F major 7, same thing here you can just move up the keys C major 7 D flat major 7 D major 7 D flat e, so on and so forth so that really when you're looking at a lead sheet that you need to be able to comp from you've got these chords at your disposal okay and that's what the the title really means when I when I say I play any jazz standard using these eight chords you could take any standard that you want to play like for example autumn leaves First chord A minor 7, then D7, then G major 7, then C major 7. If you've got those chords already there, then that's half of the job done. All right. But if you can't play those and you kind of get in the first chord and you think, like, A minor 7, next chord, D7, and you're kind of struggling to get the chords like that, then it's obviously going to slow the process down. What you want to have is the chords from memory so that you've got them there already. You've got the tools for the job. <laughs> Alright, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to assume that you know all these chords because I know that a few of you have left comments saying that you know these chords already and we're going to look at applying them to standard repertoire. And by the way, if, if this lesson is a bit kind of basic, I know this is very much aimed at those who have never played jazz before, so if this is pretty easy for you, don't worry, in the upcoming weeks we're going to be moving swiftly on to more chords which are hopefully going to be more challenging for those that have been playing for a little while already. Okay, so um, let's keep on moving on. So that second PDF that we have is called Chord Chart Exercises. Okay, Chord Chart Exercises. So I'll just give you guys a, a few seconds to load that, that one up for me. In the first tune, if you get the PDF, you should say tune up, tune up. All right, so assuming that you've got the tune-up lead sheet now, what we're going to do is talk about how you can apply these chords to uh, this jazz standard. So tune-up, classic jazz standard, I think, by, um, I think Miles Davis wrote this one. Um, so I know that obviously some of Miles Davis songs, he wrote them, but he's credited with writing them, like so that. But Chuck Wayne actually wrote that one, so I think Miles did write this one. Um, if I'm incorrect, then please leave a comment <laughs> letting me know. I could be wrong about that, but it's often um, thought of 
as far as I know, that Miles Davis wrote this standard. Anyway, um, let's have a look at the song. So this song has one jazz chord progression all the way through. If you know what it is, then leave the um, then put in the comments what jazz chord progression tune-up uses. There's one that it uses, it uses it on the first line of the music, then again in the second line of the music. If you know what that chord progression is, leave it in the comments. If not, I'll assume that no one knows it and I'll, uh, I'll give you the answer in just a sec. So the progression that TuneUp uses exclusively is a 2-5-1 chord progression, okay? And that's really a big thing with jazz chords and jazz guitar. Oh, fantastic, someone's got it actually. Duncan, you've got it, so well done. Duncan's managed to get this one. So it's a tune-up, um, a 2 5 one, which is used in tune-up. And uh, a 2 5 one, if you're in the key of D major, D major, 2 chord, E minor 7, 5 chord, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is A, A7 and the 1 chord is a D, all right? So first three chords, E minor 7, A7 and D major 7. So E minor 7, let's think about the first that first chord, you want to try and play it there. I'd say it's a little bit high up the guitar to play it there, you kind of, especially if you've got a non-cutaway guitar, like an acoustic guitar, you're probably going to be running out of frets. <laughs> so I would say go for this E minor 7 there, and then you want to try and think of where the nearest available A7 chord is. So, of course, you could play one up there, but that's a bit far away, so... I would say to go for that A7 chord there. And then you want to think of the closest D major 7 chord there, which is right there. Okay, so you've got E minor 7, then A7, then D major 7. Now, um, as Duncan said just a, a second ago, this this chord progression is all just two five ones really. So uh, once you've got that shape, it's kind of a symmetrical shape that you can keep on moving round and get a lot of mileage out of. So the first chord progression is a 2-5-1 in B major. Then the second um, line of this is a 2-5-1 in C. Okay, 2-5-1 in C major. So you can play the same, exactly the same thing there. Okay, so I'm going to play what we've got so far. Um, by the way, when you first learn these chord progressions, it's a good idea to use a simple rhythm. In terms of the right hand, you can use finger style. So you can maybe put a thumb to the bass note and then maybe use three fingers for the rest of the chord. And you can play the chord like that. Finger style, or you can strum down. Obviously, if you're playing the chords with the root on the sixth string, you have this A string, which is kind of omitted. Like, for example, on that C major seven chord that we were just talking about. Yeah, <laughs> on that C major seven that we were just talking about, then we have that A string there that we're not playing. So you want to try and choke that one out so that it sounds dead. So that when you strum it, you've got a nice clean strum like so, okay? And that's what I do for all the chords which have the root on the sixth string, so you get a nice clean sound. All right, so let's keep on going. So we've got a D minor seven chord, A seven, D. Oh, wait, sorry, that's what I was gonna do. So I was gonna suggest a rhythm that you were gonna, that, that you can use to go through all of these chords. So I would recommend something like the Charleston rhythm, which is just a, a dotted quarter note followed by an eighth note. So that sounds like this. I'll just play it on an E minor 7 chord. It's a nice constant rhythm. Obviously, when you're more fluent and confident with various different jazz rhythms, then you can explore other rhythm patterns, which we will be getting into in these live streams. So if you're tuning for other live streams that I'm going to be doing, we're going to be talking more about jazz rhythm. But just for now, it's a good idea just to use this basic rhythm, okay? And that will mean that your brain is really only focused about changing the chords, all right? Looking at the chord chart and changing the chords, rather, if you... It's kind of like that game Jenga, you know? You can um, keep stacking things up, or it's almost like juggling would probably would be a better example. If you were just juggling with two balls, like if you were just thinking of the chords and following the chord chart, then I'm sure most of us could do that. But if we were trying to think of different rhythms 
different inversions uh, and other things like that, then that's when you might kind of drop the balls or if you're playing Jenga, that's when it might kind of crash over. So it's, a good, <laughs> it's certainly a good idea just to kind of only think of one or two components when you're working on this. All right, so I'm going to play the top two lines of tune up. Um, Hopefully you guys can um, join in if you like. I'll count in if you've got your guitars and you want to play along. And we'll go through the top two lines of tune up. So, one, two, three. <laughs> So that brings us there to the end of the first two lines um, using the Charleston rhythm, using our jazz chords with the root on the sixth and the fifth string. So that's one rhythm you could do. If you wanted a more constant strumming pattern, you could kind of do the, the Freddie Green thing and do the 4 2 a bar. So you could do. well also um, so yeah the, the main thing that you want when you transitioning through these chords is not to have any stops you don't want to be that's you know what you certainly don't want <laughs> all right because you know you could be playing a gig and that really wouldn't go down well so it's always a good idea when you're practicing these chord changes is to um, is to basically go through this and try and go slow, okay? So if you go slow through it, then you're practicing playing it perfectly. You're not practicing making mistakes. So if you start practicing this and you go faster and you've got to stop, that's no good. But if you practice this slower with no mistakes, practicing playing it perfect all right you can just keep on doing that and increase the tempo until you've got the desired musical output really so i think that's the best way to do it all right so the third line of this song once again is a two five i think it was duncan that said that this all uses two fives and that's exactly what the third line does c minor seven now you could if you want we've been playing using this kind of formation you could keep that going for B flat or you could play B flat up here as well and then you've got a G minor 7 chord as shown on the chord chart there as well first time ending B minor 7 F7 and then a B flat major 7 then an A7 okay so using the Charleston rhythm um, I'll give you guys a a minor break from uh, from my uh, British accent, and I will uh, I'll just play through the, the the top four lines using the, the Charleston rhythm, uh, so you can hear what's going on and feel free to play along if you like. And in fact, if you if these chords are new to you and I'm playing along, another thing that you could do is you could just from one chord let the chord sustain and try and catch up with the chord that way as well. Okay, and then as you feel more confident with that Charleston rhythm or the four two bar rhythm. You can add that then. All right, so let's give this a go. So one, two, one, two, three, four. So that's basically how the um, first four lines sound with that one. So that will hopefully give you kind of an indication as to what you need to do if these chords are new to you. So that's what you need to do there. Like I keep on saying as well, if you guys have any questions about this stuff, um, then feel free to leave a comment asking any question you like. And I'll, um, I'll do my best to try and answer the question in the lesson so we're going to look at two of the jazz standards i'm just going to 
um, get a quick drink of vodka. Yeah, I'm only joking, this is only water. Um, so I'm just going to have a quick drink of water, then we'll look at the, the next two standards um, on the PDF. All right, so the next two standards on the PDF, hopefully you guys can see them. We're looking at the Tune Ladybird by Tad Dameron, and we're looking at the classic standard Summertime uh, by George Gershwin. So, um, yeah, let's, let's begin. So Ladybird, um, so we've got some two fives here as well, and we have a, a much, we have, we have um, a short form again. It's a 16 bar form with a bunch of two fives as well. So probably the main modulation, and if you keep seeing me grind here, I've got the, the chord sheet um, on a on a computer as well. So I'll try not to, um, you know, if I'm looking there, I, I am aware there's a camera. It's just it's easy to keep on looking at this chord chart as I'm talking about things. So the main modulation that happens in Ladybird, we're in C major for a lot of the song. Then we go to A flat. So if you know what that modulation is, C major to A flat, let me know. It's common and it's used in a bunch of different jazz standards. All the things you are is one. Autumn Leaves is another. C major to A flat. If you guys, anyone that knows, that's a bit more experienced and knows what that modulation is, then um, please let me know. I've got a few questions here. Is it common to change rhythm patterns when soloing rhythms? Um, someone just asked about changing rhythm patterns when with soloing rhythms. Um, yeah, you know, I think comping is a very interactive thing. And as we get further into the course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create some loops here on my pedal of me playing melodies and things. And I'm going to show how you might do that basically when, um, you know, when you get the melody. So obviously it's kind of hard to give you an answer now, but if I record a melody to uh, the song, then I might show you how you can adjust the, the rhythm patterns to suit the melody to a song like a bebop melody might require different comping from say a songbook melody like All The Things You Are or something like that. So um, let's carry on then. So with Ladybird, um, what we've got here is a tune that has a lot of two five ones and uh, that's what we need to get familiar with. So just realizing that there's a few new people joining as well. So if you are enjoying this class, um, if you could give this video a like, that would be tremendously useful and really help support this channel with future live streams. So, Ladybird um, starts in the key of C major, then we've got this F minor 7 to B flat 7. You could use the same strumming pattern. Then it goes back to C major. So, this thing of F minor 7 to B flat 7, B flat 7. Whenever you approach a one chord from a flat seven, that's referred to um, by the jazz community as something called a backdoor two five, a backdoor two five one. And um, what that means is that you're just approaching the chord from the flat seven, okay? One example of where this happens is a tune called Mystic. You're in E flat, then you've got a two five into the four, then it becomes minor, A flat minor, D flat seven, and then it goes back in. flat okay so it's a, a common approach that you find in many jazz standards it happens in Stella by Starlight as well it's called a backdoor 2-5 that's what's going on there okay so from the beginning C major one chord backdoor 2-5 back into C major then this part here Um, I asked if any of you guys knew what was going on, but um, one person said he didn't know. So this is B flat minor seven, E flat seven, and A flat major seven. This is a, a modulation on a different key. You know, if you were improvising over this song, you could kind of get away with thinking C major for parts of it. But at this part, if you're playing C major over A flat, then that's really not going to do you any favors, and you're probably not going to get a call back for a future gig. It's completely gone into a different key. And the modulation here, you can either think of it as going from C to A flat, as going up a flat six, or down a minor third. All right, sorry, down a major third even. <laughs> so up a flat six, or down um, a third. 
all right and another tune that does this all the things you add that's um, in a flat and then that goes to C so it's kind of like a flip of what you've got here so it's a common occurrence in jazz standards this thing where you go down a third tertiary modulation you know and in autumn leaves what have you got two five one in G major Right, so if you're in G and you go down, that's you know that that's down the third. So tertiary means three. So that's kind of what's going on there. All right, so after A flat major seven, you then have got a two five there. So you've got A minor seven and a D seven, um, and this is part of kind of a, a turnaround, I think. So it goes A minor seven. And obviously, if you're A flat, then when you go to A minor seven. That's only a fret up, so it's not many miles away. You're kind of getting back into the key of C, right? A minor has got a C triad built into it, so it's kind of setting up the coming back to the home key. All right, so you've got A minor seven, D seven, and then you've got a D minor seven, G seven, and then back to the Canadian key of C. So you've got a two five one back into C. All right, so that's what's going on there. Always good to try and get your head around some of the harmony that's going on in these things. Um, I think that's always a good thing to do. And then once you're back at C, you've got a turnaround, which is called the Tad Dameron turnaround. And this is, um, if you're new to jazz, I wouldn't really get too bogged down with what's going on with this one. It's a uh, you probably have to go and dunk your head into some cold water um, after this. If you're new to jazz, I don't want to overwhelm you too much but basically um, for those that are more advanced and that have been following this channel for a while I'll give you a quick overview so your classic turnaround to a C major 7 might be C major A minor 7 D minor 7 then G7 but what is going on here is that A minor 7 if you think of a tritone from A minor you get E flat and that's an E flat major seven here. And then where you would typically have D minor, the D, if you think of a tritone from there, you've got an A flat. And then the G7, if you think of a tritone from G, you get D flat major seven. All right, so what you've got now is, once I'll, I'll play a one, six, two, five, followed by the Tad Dameron turnaround, which has got a bunch of tritones. So standard one, six. Both have the same job. One is just a bit more juicier, <laughs> I suppose, than the other. So that second one, the direction is still going back to C major seven. All right, so that's what's going on there. So if you're new to jazz chords, I really recommend that, that's, that you go through this, trying to play this, um, this jazz standard using a simple rhythm. So I'll demonstrate the entire thing. Now with that Charleston rhythm, you know, when you've got two chords per bar, like what you actually do have towards the end, you may have to split the, the bar between the rhythm. So you'd probably have to do something like that. So here we go, I'll play Lady Bird from the beginning using the eight beginner jazz guitar songs that we covered earlier in the class. So one, two, three, four. <laughs> So there we go, that's Lady Bird play with those basic chords. Um, really, what you can do is, you know, you, you can think simpler to begin with. And, you know, what I realised I was doing there, upon ha kind of halfway through it, some chords I was using some other inversions as well. And I tried to keep it strictly to the exercise, but that F minor 7, that's from the beginner PDF, but I think I was using this chord. So if you know the chords, you can always 
throw these in as well. Like for example, instead of the uh, D7 chord, you can always play a D9 chord as well. Of course, that's much easier to get to from the A minor 7 chord, and I'm sure most of you would agree sounds better than that um, chord as well. Okay, so that's what you need to do there. So besides this, I've left one jazz standard for you to take a look at as well, Summertime, which I may address in the next live stream. But, you know, I always think it's good to leave students with something to practice rather than me going through absolutely everything. And obviously, if you are new to jazz, then we have covered an awful lot of material already. Okay, so obviously, if you are new, you've never even played a C major 7 before, then this is easily a week or two's worth of assignments for you and you really want to make sure that you're up to scratch with everything that I have said. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment even after this video is aired. If you leave a comment, I'll try to address some of these comments in the next live stream, which I do, which should be at the same time next Thursday. Once again, sorry for the delay um, in starting this lesson. There was a few technical issues, um, but luckily we got going um, but we were about 10 or 15 minutes late, I believe, so sorry about that. Finally, I'd like to say that if you enjoyed the lesson, um, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And I have actually got a special offer on uh, my beginner jazz guitar chords uh, course at the minute. If you go to my website, jamiehorryguitar.com, then go on the e-store and then go on beginner jazz guitar chords. If you enter jazz guitar deal at checkout, you'll get 50% off the course. All right. So that's... Um, Obviously, that's a once-in-a-lifetime up in the hammer jacket. If you, any support that you can give me in that sense is tremendously appreciated. So thank you um, all for watching. I hope that you all stay safe and take care. And I look forward to um, seeing you all in next week's live stream. Same time, same place. Have a good one, and uh, hopefully I'll see you all then. Thanks for watching. Cheers.